I was raised to respect my elders, but I got a dangerous ass grandmother and it's like, you rub her the wrong way, you gonna catch a cane to the knee. And I have been through that enough <laughs> in my life. So I'm not, that's one thing I'm terrified of. Fuck, you ever been hit with a cane above the belt? That shit hurts. You think they ain't got no strength, that shit hurts. Mm -mm. Still got a scar on my side. We're not gonna talk about that though. <laughs> <laughs> we can go there. No, I don't want to go there. Okay. But on the serious though, what I'm terrified of is um, driving. Because it's like, I've been driving for almost five years. And the amount of times I almost lost my life from other people. Like, I will admit there's maybe one or two times where I looked at my phone, looked up, and it's just like, swerve before I die. But other than that, it's like... No, I, I done lost my life because of someone else. Too many, no, mm-mm. That, that's a no-go. Kanye is my, is my, one of my favorite people on this planet. Cause it's like, when he has his opinion, he's going to stick for it. Like, he don't give a shit about what anybody said. I mean, sure, he can be childish about it sometimes. We all can. Like, don't judge a man on being, like human, just like everybody else. But it's just like, what, there are some things I disagree with him on very few, but overall it's just like, that is someone I embody to be. It's like the honesty plus living his life how he wants to. Like, and that's why I don't watch certain interviews, especially like when I, that, that Sway interview, I saw the excerpt from him, just like, I'm not gonna like this, so I'm not gonna watch it, but, but like, I feel like this, he's not really different from your average person. He may be a little bit more narcissistic because he does the same, he do the same thing that I do. It's just like, I feel like I'm one of the best in certain areas, but I say that to keep myself going versus someone constantly tearing themselves down purposefully or jokingly. It's like, Negative self -talk. right. Like he's not really that much he's different. Positive self right, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, look at his career. Like, you say Kanye, and people can talk about him and his entire family. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney, Nike, Google. Now, who's going to be the Medici family and stand up and let me create more? Or do you want to marginalize me till I'm out of my moment? When you put something in the control of someone behind the scenes, someone even be further behind the scenes can take control because they're bored. And I don't trust that. Like the whole cars driving themselves. Cool, but imagine a dickhead driving by in a cab with his laptop in his hand that has the capability but like that's a self-automated car let me see if i can get into get into its um into the uh, hard drive and see if i can actually break this shit down and shut down the car in the middle of traffic i know that's a worst case scenario but it's just like i got enough family working in the government saying they've caught people under the ages of 16 15 hacking into people's Wi-Fi than hacking into computers because they were bored. I don't need to lose my life because some asshole is bored and wants to hack my car. No, no. Because where there's a per perfect utopia, there's a perfect person who wants to fuck it up. There's always, always. He's somewhere. He may not be right there, but he's somewhere. We still have that radio mindset. Like we're in the car, we may not sit there and constantly look for the best hits on the radio, but it's just like, we hear something, we look at the screen, it's like, oh, that's so-and-so, and then we keep driving.
there's really no extensive look to say, oh, who produced this or who did that? The only time people look for that is if they have an interest in the background people or if that person wants to work with the background person. Like most of the time it's rappers hearing something just like, oh, I want this on my next project. Then the next question is, who made this? When it comes to the hottest song, like Drake's producer, 40, if you take away 40 from his militia. I love you through everything. I'm notorious for this like, you know, very lo-fi, you know, underwater sound. Drake, of course, he's gonna make hits, but the hits are not gonna be sa the same because that song 40 may have made for him, it would have never happened. And vice versa, if 40 never worked with Drake, he'll still have hits because that's the type of production. He knows what he's doing, but he's not gonna have those hits with Drake. So I feel like it's an even playing field. Mm -hmm. Like we're on the same boat. The only difference is one's in front of the camera and one's behind the person in front of the camera. I'm scared to go see the, um, the one that came out most recently. Because I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, but I'm an, enough where I can keep up. And it's like everything I've heard is scaring me. Like the same way with, I think, I can't remember what Harry Potter, mo Harry, Harry Potter movie it was. Ugh, troll bogeys. I think it was one that came out like two or three years ago. I watched it and that kind of killed the whole series for me. And I'm scared for that to do it. I'm scared that it'll, that'll do that for me with the new Star Wars one, because I just love Star Wars. So it's just, like, yes, I love Star Wars. I like. Yeah, I was curious, if either you love it or you hate it, so. I love it, but it's just like, if something happens in the movie that just kills it for me, I'm gonna be really pissed. Missy called Jar Jar Binks. Missy, your humble servant. So I'm kind of just like leaving it alone until another one comes out, and I'll watch them back to back, because hopefully this, that one will redeem it. Versus you think Disney's gonna run it into the ground? Disney is very dangerous, and I don't want to speak about Disney. Yeah, let's cut this shit off. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I believe in reincarnation. So, Wait, like... Okay, that's my question, then. So... Why? I feel like I was probably royalty, because you know you always go down the chain. Once you become royalty, you go back down to, like, peasant or something before. I feel like I was probably just a dickhead who was doing nothing at one point before the royalty thing because like i'm slowly going up the chain and i can see it so i wasn't a king but i wasn't like full-blown peasant before it was something in between because i'm still at that in between point my ideas are driven by emotion and like that's something else that's helped me is like because some people try to meet a quota every day and it's like, my, I have a quota, but it's for different reasons. I try not to work when I'm angry because I already have an extensive discography of dark and heavy production. And that's what happens when I'm angry. So that's maybe the only time I don't work on something. But regardless of how I'm feeling, I always try to work on something. My main project is like, Smile Life is Short. It's like, yeah, who let the bastard in? Yeah, who let the bastard in? That's something my grandmother Teddy used to, grandma Teddy used to say to me it was like, regardless of what comes at you, you know, you think about the negative, you're gonna get negative results. So you gotta like smile and keep telling just like smile, life is short, keep moving and all that. And it's just like, I didn't, that didn't pick up on me until I was 19. Yeah, until I was 19, that's when I started the project. And it's like my past plus how I was living my life at that time literally put the spin on that whole project. And like it's also put a spin on how I live my life and how I do my production and other things in the present now. For me, family is something that keeps me going and keeps me healthy during this whole journey. Not even just the music business, in every business, it's like majority of it's grimy. Nobody, not everybody's gonna say that, not everybody's gonna admit that, but it's just like, that's just how it is. So being able to, you know, turn around and say, all right, I have my foundation, just in case I fall, there's something for me to fall on. So that when it's time to get back up, I have no issue. It's like, cause most people will say, 
oh, I, I do this by myself. I have my team, but I'm mostly by myself. And it's like, that adds on stress. And it's like, I got enough health problems as it is. Stress is not one thing I, I voluntarily add. No, that's no. If I don't time myself or give myself the opportunity, I will spend all day on social media and not live my real life and vice versa. I'll go days or weeks without being on social media and feel like I've missed something. So I feel like I just time myself every day, be like, all right, look for as much information as you can and then take your day to think about it. But like with the whole internet thing, it's just like, I'm one of those people that if I'm by myself in the house, everything's on airplane mode. Um, if I'm on a connection, it's a secure one that I made sure of and everything. It's just like, I don't trust none of that. Because that has happened before on one of my old laptops that someone hacked into my laptop and like turned on the webcam and started taking over. And I was just like, no, not gonna happen again. So after that, I've been real, real, real careful. Threw the whole laptop away, like when my, when my mom got a different Wi-Fi connection, I said, all right, I'm gonna make sure this is secure. Cause that was my fear. It was just like, they got into my laptop. Mm. I was scared because my mother's a government employee. So when that happened, I'm thinking they got into mine. This shit could veer off into getting hers. I, I can't let this happen again. That's why I'm so careful now. It's kind of someone I don't talk about much, but it's my best friend, Jasmine. I've known her just before UWL started, cause when I was younger, I had suicidal issues. Like it was around the second or third time I attempted it. And she, like, she's the reason I'm alive now. So it's just like her being around is the reason I'm able to do all this great stuff. So it's just like, she's one of the most influential ones to me, like to keep me going and all that. Uh, and it's like, that's not something like two years ago, I would have never told anybody. But now it's just like, it's nothing to really be scared about. Because it's like, those are my own personal issues. I've mostly figured them out, picked them out, solved them out. But she's one of the most influential ones for me. Because again, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be around today. What's your advice to someone, your message to someone contemplating suicide? Comprise a list of people to talk to and take your time because we always watch movies or listen to music that says wait there's so to be like wait there's so much more you could do or this and that but like the message is always so vague it goes in one ear and out the other for that person so it's like what i would say is find what you love and expand upon it and it's like You'll find more reasons why you love that. Like, you'll be so focused on the love that the negativity and hate just, just out the window. Like, focus on what, what you love. Focus on what you want to do. Basically, what you want, not what you need. Because sometimes people confuse what they need with negativity, mainly with, like, nine to five jobs, uh, multiple jobs, sacrificing happiness. And it's just like, don't do that right now. Worry about your happiness. What makes you happy? Do it all day. What you love? Do it all day. And then a few days, few months, however fucked up in the head they may be, it may take them longer, it may take them shorter. By the time you, you open your eyes after you're doing all those things you love, you'll realize that life is hard, but it's really what you make it. Potentiator. 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 Potentiator.